Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Westbury Council April 20th, 2021 meeting. On the call to order, all members of council are present and we have a quorum. Supervisor Hewlett, at this juncture, would you please go through the Zoom features for tonight's meeting? Absolutely, and thank you, Mayor Robinson. Before I begin, if you get disconnected at any time, you can dial 1-647-558. 0588 and enter the meeting ID 8509797 Both members of council and staff have been briefed on the various features of the Zoom meeting software and will be raising their hand on video to speak. For members of the public, if you require any technical assistance throughout the meeting, you can send a chat message to myself, Cody Hewlett, Recreation Supervisor, and I will attempt to assist you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Supervisor Hewlett. On item number two, moment of reflection. If you would, please take a quiet moment. Thank you. Item number three, declaration of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof. Members of council, is there anything to declare at this time? Seeing nothing, we will move on to item four delegations and presentations. We have a delegation uh, this evening, 4.1, Jenny Parsons, regarding wading pool mural project. Uh, we are A-OK -okay to move along because the agenda scheduled this uh, uh, delegation for five after. I see both Jenny and Steve are here. Welcome. Uh, we are very much looking forward to your a delegation. I'm sure you've been briefed by the clerk that it's a maximum of 10 minutes. Uh, most interesting. Take it away and thank you for being here. So this I'm going to unmute myself there. Uh, hello, yes, for those of you who don't know us, uh, JP Morrell and here's Steve Morrell. Uh, thank you very much for considering our proposal tonight. I uh, are really pleased to be able to uh, be here with you. I, I get excited when I see your faces already, but anyway. <laughs> um, okay, so um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the project. It's a waiting, a waiting pool mural project. I have been rehearsing this, so Stephen hasn't had a chance to, to say much. <laughs> but um, if you have any questions, I hope that I leave enough time for those at the end. So I'll talk about the project and I'll talk about the funding and then I'll talk about the timing. I've asked Cody if we can share our screen and I'm not sure if that will be possible, but he, maybe he'll look into it for us. The project is a mural on the cement wall. It's based loosely on the project I've just completed with the Tom Thompson Art Gallery, where I did a workshop with grade nine art students. We took those drawings, I composited them and I created a 75 foot mural inside the gallery with their images. I think I've sent that to the counselor so you can see what that sort of looks like. Uh, there is a translation there, obviously, from drawing when you put a lot of color and you put, put it on a wall, it starts to look like something else on its own. But that was all student drawings. So the waiting pool mural, I also want to do workshops with the kids here in town, with all three schools, take their images. Thematically, I think we could look at the 150th anniversary. Um, potentially, I, I think that's probably up to discussion with the kids too. Um, so that's the project. The, the funding of the project. Uh, we've already submitted an application to Community Foundation Gray Bruce. When I called them to let them know that I wouldn't get to you guys till after their deadline, they said, go ahead, make the application and please contact the Durham Art Gallery and they'll submit the application for you. So the Durham Art Gallery did agree to submit that application and the deadline, um, they uh, will know on May 17th whether we got the funding for the mural. Huh. <clears throat> um, now the timing. If we get the grant uh, May 17th, then we can start painting it in June with your permission. Uh, the pool opens in July. I talked to Randy at the arena. He says that he thinks it's an excellent idea. I'll quote him. <laughs> <laughs> he said that it, the, the wall is good to go uh, and we could paint there in June. If we don't get the funding in May, then I think we'll go to the community, to organizations and businesses and see if we can raise money that way. And then the painting project would be in September. Uh, that's my practice. How do I do, Steve? I practiced without him. So really, there was no room for him. How'd I do? Uh 
Thumbs up. Okay, so that's seating. There you go. Do you have any questions? Well, thank you very much for that most entertaining presentation. Uh, delegation. <laughs> and uh, it, it's a, a wonderful project. So overall, wonderful um, presentation. Thank you so much. The thank first you. question is coming from uh, Councillor Hutchinson. Hi, Jenny and Steve. It's Councillor Hutchinson here. Um, just uh, wondered about the uh, age of the school children. Are you talking the local elementary school children? Or are you talking high school children? Uh, thank you. I, I'm talking about the elementary school kids. I actually already have been in contact with the teacher at Edshell, whose grade four students are doing some wonderful drawings already thematically on boats. And I wanted to share those with you too here. I wonder if Cody's got me set up. Um, <laughs> no. Cody, let me share my screen. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. That's very sweet of you. Thank you. Um, if you'd like, I will answer with some images of the drawings that this is a grade four. Um, well, he's, he's doing that. Uh, so the short answer is yes, we're going to be working with St. Paul's and St. Peter's uh, with, uh, with Spruce Ridge. And I already have the Edge Hill class set up. They're a grade four class. They're very good drawers, beautiful painters. So this is a kid's mural. Oh yeah, thanks for those kids, for those uh, sh kids, for the kids and families at home watching this later perhaps, uh, these are the images from the Tom Thompson Gallery. These are all separate uh, student drawings uh, uh, on the wall. Uh, the student, the, the drawings I was gonna share with you from my computer, which I don't need to, are basically to prove that these grade four students are, are wonderful uh, creative people. And so yeah, elementary kids. So just to further my question, um, so presumably, uh, I, I'm glad that you're going to reach out to all three schools in the area. Um, so presumably, they're going to submit their drawings, and you're going to choose, and you're going to actually do the painting rather than the children, right? Right, right. Okay. All right. Thank you. The Sounds good. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. I'm wondering if um, Supervisor Hewlett could put the gallery um, view for the members of council and uh, our delegation. Thank you. All right, so you've completed your questions, Councillor Hutchinson. Very good. Councillor Townsend. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, first of all, I'll uh, congratulate you, Jenny, on a, a great idea and a great uh, painting mural, or three of them by the looks of it, <laughs> at <laughs> least uh, up in uh, the Thompson um, uh, Museum. but. I guess I'm wondering here, I uh, know the area you're gonna put it in, uh, what kind of maintenance is required going forward? Because um, I know that weather has a way of, of getting to things. It's in an area that has pool and, and chlorine and whatever else might be there. I just wonder how we could sustain uh, the view or the pictures that they do. I think it'd be amazing if we could. Uh, thank you for your question. It's a, it's a... It's a wonderful wall, I must say. It's a clean wall, it's a nice even wall, and you put a real thick um, high-end primer on that wall is what you do. You get that a really nice base on it. Um, then you get high quality paints and they last 15 to, to 20 years. Interestingly enough, the images that are there now are from 2012. I imagine they didn't probably have a whole lot of primer underneath them maybe, and they're still not too bad. Because the waiting pool is sort of sub street level, it actually is protected from a lot of the elements. And so even those uh, paintings that are there now are actually in pretty good shape for being 10 years old. So it's gonna thank last you. a long time, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, appreciate it. Thanks, Steve. That was all my questions, Madam Mayor. Okay, very good, thank you, Councillor. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. I just wanna say, um, Good to see the the two of you, and uh, thank you very much for the energy that you you bring to the meeting. <laughs> Fantastic! Um, I like the initiative of it. I think uh, we could all use some. Certainly, could use some color with uh, the way that uh, things are in our community. Well, globally, for that matter. Um, it's not so much a question. I, I'm I'm excited to see that you get children in our community um, involved with such a project, and I think that just uh, speaks heaps and bounds. So, I would support it, and I'd like to see some more. Feedback from staff, but certainly uh, very interesting. And thank you. Very good, thank you. Now, before I go to Councillor Hutchinson, I just I just want to go to all first time speakers. So that would be Councillor Shea now. Thank you, Your Worship, and thank you, Ms. Parsons, for um, presenting this evening. 
Uh, it seems like a wonderful idea and I too uh, am very supportive. Uh, I wonder, uh, Your Worship, if we could ask staff to uh, coordinate with Ms. Parsons to see what would be the next steps going forward? Yes, I think that's a, a wonderful idea to connect staff with, uh, with uh, JP Morrell. And, um, but I'm just wondering, um, I'm wondering, Madam CAO, do you have any initial thoughts uh, in and around this uh, delegation? Uh, in, in terms well, of you. the next steps, that is. <laughs> Yes, yes, thank, thank you, Madam Mayor, and, and uh, thank you to our delegations for your time this evening. I did have one, one question, and I might have missed it, but in the delegation package, it indicated that this would be a um, portable installation or a temporary installation or something of that nature. Did, are you able to give us clarity that, that that would just make a difference in the future maintenance of it, which is something that staff probably would be interested in making sure we understand? Right. Yes, uh, the mural in the Tom Thompson is temporary. So that's probably where you heard that word. Uh, they're gonna paint it over on uh, in May, um, but it was a fun project to do. For us in the waiting pool here, uh, it goes right on to the cement. So there's no drilling into the wall. There's no interference with the structure. Um, easy to clean, easy to touch up and easy to paint over too if you want in 15 years to do a new one. Um, yeah, easy to maintain. Thank okay. you. Okay, th th thank you very much for that. And and then in, in uh, the way of process, if council would like this project to proceed, then they would give us direction to staff and we will certainly work with, with you, Jenny, to uh, see what's involved. And um, you know, if there's any anything else that we need to bring to council, that can follow in due course. That's great. And it would also be wonderful just to get an update on the project as it's moving along, should that be the wish of council, for sure. Thank you, Madam CAO. My Pelsky Shea, you still have the mic. Uh, thank you. If, if the CAO is inviting us to uh, give direction, I would be happy to uh, give direction that council uh, supports this project uh, through a motion, if that's appropriate. I think a motion would be most appropriate. Please and go ahead. I, I would move that uh, council supports the project as uh, proposed based on a positive recommendation from staff. Thank you. It's as if you read my mind. I was just looking for a little further and thank you so much. Uh, would there be a second or is that you, uh, Councillor Hutchinson? Or um, did you have a comment later? I do have another question, but I can second that, yes. Okay, I will put you as a seconder. Um, so does that conclude all your comments, Councillor Shea, before I move on? Yep. Yes, it does. Thank you. Councillor Hutchinson. Um, just a question with the art that's there. I, I don't presume that you're going to be incorporated into it, the, the few small pictures that are there. I don't know the history of them. Do you know anything about them, Jenny, or were you planning on inc incorporating them into the new painting? Randy said that the handprints were, I think, the lifeguards from 2012. I think that actually is a, a piece that could be um, kept and incorporated. I like the little handprints. I think they're pretty cute. Uh, okay. Yeah, I would touch that up even and make it sort of uh, fresh. But yeah, uh, the other ones, I think, probably aren't quite as special because they're just sort of um, probably you know, somebody else's images, like, um, yeah. I mean, like from the Disneyland or something, I don't know. Yeah. We have oh, more of a check. comment. Uh, sorry, sorry. Counselor, I do yeah. see that uh, Supervisor Hewlett has his hand up to respond to your inquiry. Supervisor okay. Hewlett. Uh, th thank you. Um, the characters that you actually see painted down on the wall um, are from a previous lifetime when we offered Red Cross swimming lessons. Those were typically used for um, the taught lessons as opposed to doing levels one, two, and three. They did um, starfish, crocodile, that sort of thing. Um, we no longer offer Red Cross swim lessons. We've actually moved over to Life Saving Society. Uh, so those characters are actually fine to be covered. Thanks, Cody. Great. And just one last question. Um, okay. I noticed too that there is a sign in there uh, just identifying that it's the Durham waiting pool. I'm just wondering, are you going to incorporate a sign? Because it's good, sometimes it's good to have uh, signage for people to know if they don't really know what it's all about. Is that going to be incorporated, some kind of sign or? That's the sign that has the handprints on it. So yeah, it does, it, 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 I would keep that, I think. Okay, that's fine, thank you. Thank you. Clerk Sherbeck, could you please read the motion on hand? 
Aye. Yes, moved by Councillor Shea and seconded by Councillor Townsend. The Council Hutchinson. Oh, sorry. Seconded by Councillor Hutchinson. The Council hereby supports the Waiting Pool mural project as proposed um, based on input from staff. Was that correct, Councillor Shea? Okay. Thank you. And Councillor Hutchinson, you're fine with the wording as well? Good. Any other questions from members of council to the motion? Councillor Hamilton, please. Not a question, just a comment to say thanks for um, such a well-rounded presentation and, and how you reached out and made partnerships in our community. And it's just such an inclusive project and it's really appreciated. And not to mention that you found funding for your project, <laughs> also appreciated. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks Beth. Thank you. Any further comments on the motion or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate with a raised hand. Six members of council have voted in favor of this motion. This motion is carried. Thank you very much for the delegation. Uh, we look forward to seeing more bright and vibrant murals in, uh, in Durham. Thank you so much. Hope to see you again at a, a, another council meeting. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. Thank Carl. you. Bye for now. Thank you. T take care. Now, before I move on to the balance of the agenda, I just want to recognize Councillor Hutchin, uh, Councillor Hutchinson. Yes, you've got your hand up, and I don't want to continue on if that uh, if you have nothing to say at this point. Perfect. Thank you. So we are going to move on to item number five, which is public meetings. N A for this agenda. Uh, as you know, we had a uh, public meeting public meetings this afternoon. Item six, comment period. So at this point, Supervisor Hewlett, would you please uh, identify if there's any individuals that uh, wish to address us at comment period or whether there have been any submissions by emails or within our Dropbox and also identify how people can participate in this time. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. For members of the public wishing to um, express a comment or question during this time, may do so in a variety of ways. If you have joined us over the phone, you can press star nine to raise your hand um, and we can unmute you at the mayor's request. Alternatively, you can press star nine again to lower your hand. If you have joined us using the online meeting software, uh, you can express your comment or concern uh, by sending a chat message to myself, Cody Hewlett, Recreation Supervisor, and then we can unmute you again at the mayor's request. Um, taking a review of the dashboard and chat, I am seeing one member of the public wishing to express comment at this time. Um, the name is iPad. Yes. Well, thank you very much. If you could please uh, unmute the individual. And hello, it's, um, could we have your name and uh, your question, please? And you're identified on screen as iPad at this moment. Hello there. Thank you, Council. Steve Launce here. Um, everybody hear me? Hi, Steve. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I want to also for allowing me to do this. I'm new at doing this kind of stuff, so bear with me. I hope I do this computer stuff. I'm not real computer savvy in that. Okay. Um, I want to thank um, um, Elizabeth. There's a, a letter coming up later in your meeting and that for bringing this forward. Don't know what counts can, sue, can do about this, not, but there are two members on county council that have endorsed this situation. It's the medical officer of health pay for the area. Um, he's the highest paid in Ontario. Um, Gray County has 162,000 people. Um, Toronto has 3 million people. And Ontario has 14 million people. And he is the higher, higher paid than the Chief Medical Officer of Health for Ontario. Um, this can't leave a good feeling with our, our, our uh, PSWs, our, our RPNs, our our RNs, our uh, healthcare workers who have worked so diligently through this pandemic and that. Um, they say we're short of help in On Sound at the health unit. Um, the MOH has not been on staff for a long time up there, but there's a lot of senior staff, long-term senior staff that have left. I just wanna hope that council can, can uh, look into this do what they can. I'm not sure what they can do, um, but uh, uh, I think there has to be something looked into about the situation. Like um, the MOH, 
is more highly paid in Gray and Bruce County than what the medical officer health, chief medical officer health for Ontario was paid. Um, I hope council will look at this. There's two members on county council that have endorsed this already. And I'd like to see what, what uh, uh, West Gray Council will, would do with this. My, my prediction is it will be received for information. Thank you hope that doesn't much. happen. Well, thank you very much for your comments, Steve Lance. And first, I want to just comment on the fact that I think you did very well uh, utilizing um, the uh, computer in order to um, be a citizen with a comment. So uh, well done there. Uh, I can tell you with regard to uh, your comment that um, West Great Council does not, um, it's out of scope for West Great Council. We do not have the jurisdiction to address this matter. Uh, I can say if you um, have anything further and wish to do anything uh, further, it would be a, a, a comment or um, addressing the um, Gray Bruce Public Health a, a Unit Board that uh, would address it. So uh, it's something that we, we as a West Gray Council um, have uh, no jurisdiction over. So I thank you for your comment. Supervisor Hewlett, is there anybody else that wishes to comment oh, on, any, on any item? Uh, sorry, my apologies, Mayor Robinson. Uh, we did receive one other comment um, from Bev Falco. She did send it to Clerk Sharbeck. Oh, okay. um, I'm not sure if Bev would like to read it herself. Um, Bev, I do see you're in the meeting. If you would like to read your message yourself. Um, if you could just raise your hand, alternatively, we'll just have Clerk Chenek, uh read the comment. Sure, welcome Bev Falco. Uh, is this something that you would like to uh, comment or would you like our clerk to read your submitted comment? It's, uh, it's up to you. Uh, I'm quite fine with it being read actually by, by anyone. Certainly, and thank you and good evening. Clerk Sherbeck, you have the um, the email, I believe, in front of you. Would you please proceed? Yes, thank you to you, Your Worship. Um, and thank you, Bev, for submitting your comment. I wasn't sure if you would like to speak to it, but I have it right here. Uh, so to our Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and Councillors, I would like to comment on the notice of motion by Deputy Mayor Hutchinson that is coming up under new business. It is asking this council to give their support and thanks to Dr. Era and the Gray Bruce Health Unit for their commitment and contribution. I've been paying close attention to how Dr. Era has performed on behalf of Gray Bruce during this pandemic and have nothing but the highest praise. He's totally impressed me with his constant communications with the public, the relevant and timely information provided through many media outlets, his design of the hockey hub for vaccinations, which was brilliant and his overall leadership and sincere care for this community. And uh, Bev goes on to note um, positive, very positive experiences that her family members have had um, or concern that she could alleviate rather that her family members have had, reassuring them that our medical officer of health is indeed on the job. Um, and she continues on, I hope one day to meet him so I can thank him personally and has great faith that the council members of West Gray will give their unanimous support to this motion. Uh, thank you from Bev Falco. Well, thank you. Um, Supervisor Hewlett, are there any other uh, individuals that wish to participate in item number six comment period? Thank you, Mayor Robinson. At this time, I believe that concludes the individuals looking to participate in comment period. Okay, and those are all the submitted um, comments as well? Yes, correct. Okay, thank you very much. Then we will move on to item seven, which is unfinished business. For this agenda, that is an NA. Um, item eight, adoption of minutes. Well, the first one is um, under item eight, 8.1 the March 30th, 2021 Special Council Meeting Minutes. Members of Council, are there any comments or um, issues with regard to these minutes? Seeing none, 8.2, the April 6, 2021 Council Meeting Minutes. Again, Members of Council, are there any inquiries or issues with regard to those minutes? All right, seeing none. 
Clerk Sharbeck, could you please read the recommendation? Here you worship the recommendation is the council hereby adopts the minutes of special meet council meeting of March 30th, 2021 and the regular council meeting of April 6, 2021 as circulated. Thank you. Is there a mover for this motion? Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, are you moving the motion? Thank you, Mayor Robinson. This is Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. I will move the motion. Is there a seconder? Councillor Hamilton, are you seconding this motion? Yes, I'll second. Any questions from members of council on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate with a raised hand. Six members of council have voted in favor of this motion. The motion is carried. On item number nine, which is committee and board reports, 9.1 Durham Business Improvement Area Annual General Meeting, March 17th, 2021. Any comments or, or um, issues on this? Councillor Shea. Um, I'm using the uh, HTML version of the agenda. And when I click on these links, I'm not able to get any document up. I don't know if it's me or if anyone else is having the same problem. Um, Clerk Sherbeck, do you have uh, an explanation for this, please? Do you, Worship? <laughs> Actually, I don't. I'm looking at the HTML on my other screen as well. And when I click on each item, um, it comes up um, in the top right hand of my screen with the title and below it, the attachment. So I do have the attachments there to, to click on. Let me see. Um, No, they aren't actually showing the documents. So this, we have had some trouble um, uploading this agenda. Quite a few different pieces of it actually have, have caused a problem. And I don't know if it has been our internet connection or a glitch in eScribe, but um, we can certainly get those updated as quickly as possible so that they do end up on the website and we can email them out to council as well. Sorry. Clerk Sherbeck, is there another version on the website that would be available for uh, citizens um, and members of council? Yes, it should be included in the PDF version. Um, just take some scrolling. Thank you. Oh, actually, I'm just getting a message here that it may just need to be republished and take it takes a few minutes to republish that okay um i think with the link change oh um <laughs> that caused a few other glitches as well the link so change to get into this meeting yeah it's I they're see. definitely included in the pdf but if you bear with us that should recirculate and republish um any moment now sorry that, that is working for me now. Thank you. Is it? Okay, perfect. Thanks. Wonderful. That was um, quicker than expected. So. Well, Clerk Sherbeck, thank Good. you for your quick response and, and knowing the technology. Uh, Councillor Shea, was there anything further at this point? Okay, no, so thank you. With regard to the Durham Business Improvement Area Annual General Meeting, March 17, 2021 minutes, our uh, Council appointee on uh, the BIA is Councillor Hutchinson, and I see his hand up. Please go ahead. Yeah, I'd just, I'd just like to speak briefly to that. And um, they, in March 17th, they had their annual general meeting. Um, as you know, businesses in Durham are like many businesses are, have struggled through this past year. So um, the BIA is, is trying to carry on and do the best they can uh, on trying times. Um, a lot of businesses are closed or open only part-time and so on. But so far, the majority have struggled through and I congratulate them on that. Um, at the general meeting, uh, we had a delegation from um, the West Gray Accessibility Committee talking about uh, coming up with some way of um, mobility, uh, trying to improve mobility into some of the stores by putting in ramps uh, through, I guess, stopgap uh, group. Um, as Minister Councilor Shea could probably clarify that a bit better, but um, basically they're looking at maybe some ways of helping with accessibility downtown. Um, there was um, um, you know, the, the businesses are looking to help improve the looks of the downtown by putting in hopefully some new garbage receptacles, which they're looking into and, you know, sprucing up some of the benches and so on. 
Um, they've done some window painting over the over those seasons, and that's helped a little bit. And uh, they're still talking about some kind of um, pared down arts fest. Uh, but again, it'll depend on the situation come summertime and whether they're able to do anything. Obviously, gatherings probably will be out of it, but um, maybe some kind of music on the street. So there's a few things in in um, going on. And uh, as I say, the BIA carries on. Uh, check out their website. Um, townofdurham.ca is um they try to keep that up to date so that's just a brief overview of where they're at thank you well thank you very much anything further on these minutes men members of council seeing none oh councillor townsend before we leave it yes so are you just talking about the bia one yes okay oh wait thank you okay thank you so now we're going to move on to 9.2, the West Great Public Library Board, February 10th, 2021 minutes. I do just have a, a comment on these. So on the first page, it speaks about halfway down, uh, there's a motion that was carried that the um, Public Library Board it will uh, correspond to individuals that uh, directly corresponded with the board. And there is, appears to be um, a request of some sort, um, although not worded exactly uh, in, in a request form uh, for further um, email to, or for an email to, or correspondence to go for myself for individuals that corresponded directly to me with regard to the Elmwood Resource Center. Um, I can tell you that when those emails initially came in, I responded to each and every one of them and advised those individuals uh, where the correspondence was going. And it was redirected to the board. Uh, council also received a copy and that was uh, through the um, CEO of the West Gray Library and also the CAO of uh, uh, West Gray. Um, there is just one other comment um, that the board suggests the chair meet with the mayor every two months or so. I'm going to suggest and invite the chair and whoever else from the board to come as a delegation or a presentation whenever they wish to full council, because I think it would be important for all of council to hear what's going on, what's new, what's fresh and exciting at the, the library. Um, so that's all my comments. Um, any comments, Councillor um, Townsend, was this where you had an inquiry? No, okay. Uh, all right, then on 9.3 then, the West Gray Traffic and Safety Ad Hoc Working Group, March 29th, 2021 minutes. Any comments or uh, concerns or issues? Ah, yes, Councillor Townsend. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I just wanted to draw the uh, council's attention to um, the ongoing business section seven um, that basically uh, advises that uh, we have basically uh, made three recommendations to staff, um, all of which are in the uh, proposed 2021 budget um, through the public works budget. And that is the electronic signs, uh, the speed bumps, and the reduction in speeds through our um, uh, main uh, downtown areas and uh, through the, uh, the villages and other areas that uh, should happen. And um, those are now under the hands of uh, Public Works to, uh, to implement. Uh, a few other items you'll read have come to the committee and they again have been uh, turned back to the Director of Public Works as they should because they are more maintenance um, rather than project related. And the one I will mention that has been a, a larger topic uh, discussed at Council was uh, parking concerns and we already know that Council is going to be looking at that. So. Um, we will get a full update on where those are at our next meeting, which will be May 28th. And at that point, um, we believe that we will have uh, completed our existing mandate. Uh, we are going to be checking in with um, MTO, the rep that we made contact there, just to uh, keep tabs to make sure if anything else comes up, we'll let council know. But we won't be actively meeting um, unless uh, uh, council also gives us the, uh, the direction to do that. So we thought we should uh, should let um, council know that, and that's why it's minute. Those are all my comments. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Anything further on uh, the uh, West Gray Traffic Safety Ad Hoc Working Group minutes? Seeing none. So uh, thank you all for your updates with regard to those particular minutes that are on the agenda. But under 9.4, other committee and local board updates, um, members of council, are there any updates that you wish to make on your committees that may not necessarily have had minutes attached to it? Uh, council, uh, Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, please. Thank you, Mayor Robinson, Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. I just want to give everybody a quick update on the uh, municipal airport. Um, I don't, not sure if everybody caught wind of it, but we do have some good news. We've got a couple new hangars coming in. Um, there's a flight school that uh, is going to be taking off. Um, unfortunately, the Snowbirds, if you haven't heard, we've had to put, cancel that until next year, but they are very interested in an ongoing um, annual event. So we'll keep pursuing that and I'll keep everybody uh, uh, up to speed on that. And other than that, I have nothing else to report at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Any other member of council? Councillor Hamilton. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. <clears throat> Excuse me, just to advise council uh, that the uh, newly appointed Climate Ad Action Advisory Committee is going to be meeting for the first time on Friday, uh, April 30th in the morning. So look for that on the calendar. Thank you. Thank you as well. I'm not seeing any other hands. Um, I just want to take this uh, time to say members of council uh, you will be receiving, it should be in your inbox already, an email from, uh, well, through Gray County, perhaps uh, through our clerk. Um, and this is in regards to a link for the Gray County report regarding the vacant rebate um, program and uh, vacant unit rebate program. So what uh, County Council is both Deputy Mayor and uh, I am on uh, County Council. The recommendation that was approved was that council receive the report regarding the vacant unit rebate program, that county council supports the elimination of the vacant unit rebate program, and recommend that all local municipalities of uh, County of Gray pursue the elimination of the vacant unit rebate by passing a local municipal bylaw, and that staff, staff circulate the, the report to local municipal councils for their information. So that's just a bit of an update. Um, Clerk Sherbeck, could you please read the recommendation? To you, Your Worship, the recommendation is that minutes and reports uh, not otherwise dealt with are hereby received. Would there be a mover for this motion? Councillor Townsend, are you moving the motion? Yes, Madam Mayor, I will move the motion. Uh, Councillor Hutchinson, are you seconding the motion? Yes, I can second that motion. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor then indicate with a raised hand. Six members of council have voted in favor of this motion. The motion is carried. On to item 10, which is correspondence. 10.1 uh, items requiring action. 10.1.1 Tipu Kaja, Ministry of the Solicitor General, Re. Municipality of West Gray 2020 compliance results. Cook Sherbeck, could you read the recommendation, please? Thank you, Your Worship. The recommendation is that Council send a letter of appreciation to Community Emergency Management Coordinator, Chief Phil Schwartz, and the West Gray Emergency Management Group, thanking them for their work towards making West Gray compliant with the EMCPA in 2020. Is there a mover for this motion? Deputy Mayor, are you moving the motion? Thank you, Mayor Robinson. This is Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. I will move the motion. Councillor Hamilton, are you seconding? Yes, I'll second. Are there any questions with regard to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate with a raised hand. Six members of council have voted in favor of this motion. The motion is carried. Item 10.1.2, Alan Thompson, Mayor, Town of Caledon, Re, letter to Minister Hadju, Re, support for 988, a three digit suicide and crisis prevention hotline. Clerk Sharbeck to the recommendation. <clears throat> Excuse me, through your worship, uh, the recommendation is that West Gray Council hereby supports the resolution of the Town of Caledon endorsing the 988 crisis line initiative. Is there a mover for this motion? 
Councillor Townsend, are you moving the motion? Councillor Townsend, yes, I'll move that motion, please. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Councillor Shea, are you seconding this motion? Yes, I'll second that motion. Questions, members of council? Councillor Townsend? And yes, I just want to point out for um, those that may not have read it, <clears throat> excuse me, that um, it is a movement that is um, progressively uh, getting uh, more widespread and given the um, the issue with mental health, particularly uh, recently, and suicides that I believe that it really is important uh, that we do support this particular initiative. And that's why I put it forward. Thank you. Well, thank you. Anything further, members of council? All right, all those in favor then indicate with a raised hand. Six members of council have voted in favor. The motion is carried. 10.1.3, Municipality of Gray Highlands Re County Led Broadband Collaboration. Clerk Sharbeck to the recommendation. Here you, Your Worship. The recommendation is that the Council of the Municipality of West Gray hereby supports a broad broadband collaborative decision-making framework initiative led by the County of Gray and request the county request that the county work with all lower tier municipalities to achieve this goal. Thank you. Uh, is there a mover for this motion? And I'm looking to Councillor Hutchinson because your hand is up. Uh, yes, I'll move the motion, but I'd also have a question after. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Councillor Hamilton, are you seconding this motion? Yes, I'll second. Back to you, Councillor Hutchinson. Yeah, so I'm just curious, maybe our, our, rep, our county council rep can give us more details. Uh, what are they really referring to? Uh, collaborative decision-making framework initiative. Sure, uh, Deputy Mayor, did you want to respond or? or um... Go ahead, Mayor. Okay, so there is, a, there is an agreed upon uh, collaborative framework for um, municipalities that are represented at, at Gray County to uh, address um, interests of commonality so there is an opportunity within um, Gray County when there's uh, more than one municipality that's interested in an issue, such as uh, something that we've already gone through, which is waste management. This is another example of that. Uh, now I can back it up a bit that um, early on a, um, a notice of motion was uh, served to uh, through Gray County Council and it was unanimously supported uh, for broadband. Uh, but as we're moving along through, um, uh, you know, through the last year, uh, there is uh, definitely support for it. So this is just a framework which looks at um, a, a partnership with the uh, municipalities at the county level. Anything further? Well, yeah, I, I don't really quite understand what they're really getting to. Uh, um, sorry, somebody's trying to fool me here. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, I, to me, it, it, it sounds like, uh, you know, are they working with the providers of broadband to try to make it equal across the county? Um, are they looking at trying to get a handle on uh, where are uh, each of our residents? Because I, I, I mentioned it before that people, it would be nice to know the people in our area, what their, what their um, internet connectivity is. And there's a way of doing that uh, and then finding out um, are we trying to meet the needs of the people that are most needy in terms of having broadband so i i don't really understand what they're coming from and i'll wait to hear more i guess in the future uh, i think it's a good idea to, to the county to take on the leadership but i do think that we need to as a west gray to get involved in and uh, promoting certain areas of West Gray that uh, it seems to be right now, it's sort of a hit and miss that uh, like ATEL and some of these other companies come in and they go up and down certain sections of the road and provide, but there's a lot of other people that don't get access. So I'm not sure how they do that. Um, so there, there's definitely some, some work to be done on that. And the other question I had with that, I'll leave that for now. The other question I had is why is in the middle of this, why are they asking that council direct staff to request support from the town of the Blue Mountains? In asking for the county grade to provide a dedicated staff person. I thought they're asking all of the lower tier municipalities, but that they mentioned about requesting support from the town of the Blue Mountains. I don't understand why that's in there. 
so what I get, what I could tell you two things, I could tell you that through Gray County, we are a member of SWIFT. So that is uh, a collaborative that is dealing with uh, broadband um, throughout Ontario. Um, I feel that there uh, needs to be more information or more explanation with regard to this, um, uh, this request. And I'm wondering if, um, if we could get that information and perhaps put it on the next um, council meeting. Uh, so yep. maybe get more background from Gray Highlands, clarify whether that is um, Blue Mountains that should be in there. Maybe it's a, a support of Blue Mountains um, previous um, resolution. But I'm suggesting you have a couple questions there, and I think uh, it would be prudent if we um, were able just to connect with Gray Highlands and get additional information. Okay, I'd be good with that. Thank you. Yeah. All right. We'll. Uh, so we'll have to see how we're dealing with the motion. I'll I'll go to the clerk um, for that. Uh, maybe I'll do that right now. I do recognize Councillor Townsend, but. Clerk Sharbeck, if we were to get more information, we still have a motion on the floor. So it would be a matter of whether it was voted in favor or something else along the way procedurally. Through you, Worship, that's correct. There is a motion on the floor and this um, information item um, was uh, pulled from our correspondence emailed report to be included on the agenda but uh, the recommendation was not just to support the resolution of Gray Highlands because that middle paragraph didn't quite fit yes. with Gray's intentions. So the recommendation was to support uh, the idea of a collaborative approach to broadband across the county and encourage the county or request the county to um, take the lead and work with lower tiers. Those are the only two pieces that um, the, the council member that requested it we're looking for uh, support from this council. That middle uh, paragraph didn't quite suit. So they didn't wanna just say, let's support that motion. They wanted to use it as a base of information and go forward with our own wording for very the same good. initiative. Does that help? Yes, it most definitely does. And very good uh, for the member of council to do that. And I would say that um, should this motion pass, um, I, we would still pursue additional information. That's just fine to do that. And I can, I can work with um, the mayor of Gray Highlands and I know uh, the clerk, clerk Sherbeck work with clerk of uh, Gray Highlands. So more information will come your way council members. So, um, and yes, we do have that motion. Anything further Councillor Hutchinson at this point? Very good, Councillor, Councillor Townsend. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, my first comment is, I was the one that asked for it to be pulled. Okay. Um, and there's a couple of reasons. First of all, um, when you get someone from afar that starts making the decisions for you, it doesn't always work out ex exactly as you expect it to if you're the recipient of that. Uh, we're seeing that with SWIFT. I've had calls from people around here and uh, because there is a, a change happening in concession to WGR where I live, but also uh, from other areas of a similar nature where they see the map that says that the, um, the fiber is coming into the area, great, now I'm set. You start doing some research and you find out they're not. They're on the fringe, they still have visibility issues. So these particular people won't actually benefit from what appears to be there. There is another initiative that's looking at hardware upgrades that they might be able to uh, work with. But again, SWIFT is, is looking at it at a very holistic view and don't necessarily understand all the, the lower detail uh, when you start talking with individual locations, homes, et cetera. Um, and that was the way I felt uh, the county might be moving in. Um, Gray Highlands put the opportunity out there to basically say, if two uh, municipalities, as you noted, ask the county to uh, collaborate, and have some collaboration with the lower tier, then this is an opportunity to do that. So perhaps we can get some of those areas that aren't gonna be hit by SWIFT and deal with them different rather than going back uh, to the same, same well every time and thinking you just do a little bit of expansion and that works. There's a, a bigger issue and it looks like we're back into the remote working, education, et cetera. Um, I know when I watch my TV, I watch the, the uh, circle spin 
as the streaming happens because of the fact that there's so many people on it, right? And I have good reception generally. So you don't need um, bad reception to be caught in that kind of situation. So a lot of people can't participate in the education or can't participate at work. So okay. I just wanted to throw that out as it's not trying to replicate uh, SWIFT and it's not trying to replicate a county specific um, sort of agenda topic or direction. It really is trying to involve the uh, communities uh, below that to actually be able to share their issues and maybe collaboratively they can work together and maybe get some funding or whatever the case may be to deal at that level and have a focus so it makes the best for the, uh, the each individual community, not just the county. Thank you. Okay, any other comments with regard to this item? Clerk Sharbeck, I wouldn't mind very much if you could reread the uh, recommendation before, or uh, the motion before I call the vote. To you, Your Worship, the recommendation is that the Council of the Municipality of West Gray hereby supports a broadband collaborative decision-making framework initiative led by the County of Gray and request the County to work with all lower tier municipalities to achieve this goal. All those in favor indicate with a raised hand. Six members of council have voted in favor of this motion. This motion is carried. We are now moving on to 10.1.4 Township of Kami re lobby government to disqualify candi candidates in criminal with criminal records. Clerk Sherbuck to the recommendation. To you, Your Worship, the recommendation is that the municipality of West Gray hereby supports the town of Conmee as they lobby the provincial government to amend the Municipal Act and the Municipal Elections Act, as may be, so that people with a criminal record who have not had their record cleared from the RCMP database by order of the Governor General of Canada be prohibited from becoming a candidate in municipal elections. And that council directs staff to send to for, send this letter to the Premier of Ontario and the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Would there be a mover for this motion? Councillor Townsend, are you moving the motion? Yes, Madam Mayor, Councillor Townsend, I do move the motion. Thank you. And is there a seconder for this motion? I am not seeing a seconder for your motion. Okay, so there's no seconder. So we move on to the next item. And that is 10.1.5. This is Elizabeth Murray, West Gray resident, re compensation and management at Gray Bruce Health. I, um, as I said earlier, but I most definitely plan to say it at this juncture, um, we have the correspondence on the agenda, but this uh, request falls outside of the jurisdiction of this West Gray Council. Um, I do, I just want to say, because it came up a, a little earlier in uh, the comment period, both uh, Deputy Mayor Hutchinson and I do serve on County Council, but we do, neither of us are appointed to the Gray Bruce Public Health Unit. So we are not, we do not even participate at the county level or at the um, Ray Bruce Public Health Unit Board uh, to in any way in terms of HR compensation, um, that type of activity. Um, so council, you could either, if you wish, receive this information or ultimately, because we always have a confirming bylaw at the end of our agenda, ultimately everything on the agenda um, gets received. Uh, is that a good explanation of it, Clerk Sharbeck? Um, as something that isn't otherwise addressed within the actions of this council that would be folded into that? Um, um, I, I, I uh, think the confirming bylaw is a little bit different. It does confirm the decisions of council, but if there's no decision of council, then the confirming bylaw wouldn't. Um, wouldn't be empowered over that. Um, although at the end of all of the, uh, sorry, of all of the correspondence, there is always a resolution that anything not dealt with specifically is received. 
So anything, you can pass a motion specifically dealing with an item or move on to the next one and it will be received in that final motion that captures anything that was um, simply noted for information or for receipt. Well, thank you for explaining what I was trying to do uh, much, much better. Uh, and I thank you for being um, a very, very good clerk on that. Okay, uh, is there uh, anything to do with this? Councillor Townsend. Oh, just on your um, microphone. Yeah, thank you. Um, I just wonder if you could elaborate uh, on the role of county council as it relates to uh, the Graver's public health unit? Just to I clarify for everyone that's listening. Sure. So um, there are members uh, appointed through county council to serve on the Gray Bruce um, Public Health Unit Board. And there are also uh, members of uh, uh, Bruce County Council that are appointed to uh, the board. Um, so th that is a board that is uh, arm's length as other boards are and that we are familiar whether it's um, any of the boards that we serve on, they uh, operate independent from uh, the county council and this council. Thank you. Uh, any further action? Uh, Councillor Shea. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Uh, earlier, uh, Mr. Lance uh, addressed this issue and you advised him that he had uh, different recourse or different different avenues that he could pursue. Yes. I wonder if maybe we should uh, make a similar recommendation to uh, Ms. Murray. Yes, actually, that is just fine. That uh, Elizabeth Murray, if if she so chooses, there is uh, another avenue, and that would be to correspond directly with the Gray Bruce Public Health Unit. And would you be able to convey that to her, or staff be able to convey that to her? Yes, that will certainly be conveyed, and that would be through our clerk. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think we are moving on to item uh, 10.2, information uh, items for information. The first one, 10.2, Carolyn Mulroney, Minister of Transportation Refunding through 2021 to 2022, Connecting Links Program for Replacement of the Gearfraxis Street Box Culvert up to $329,378. Is there anything council wishes to do with this? It is for information. However, Councillor Hutchinson. Yes, I, I guess we could receive it for information, but I am sort of curious if maybe our director could give us some information, our director of infrastructure in, in terms of, um, obviously it's good news. Anytime we receive money for bridges or culverts is good news. Um, I'm just curious whether this is the full cost and how what the traffic flow is going to look like if we do this uh, this year. Director Sharinsky. Good evening and thank you uh, through your worship. Um, essentially, um, uh, specific to the question about uh, the project happening this year, um, I'm not so confident that we'll be able to get this project finished this year, um, but having check in, checked into the funding that's um, acceptable, we can, um, we can definitely get it tackled uh, next year, just by the timing with respect to the funding and uh, finding uh, an RFP for consultants, et cetera, et cetera. And with the in-work water that would be necessary, I'm not so sure that the timelines would permit that to happen this year. So, um, uh, and the second question I believe you asked was about traffic flows. Um, so um, I can provide council with more information with that uh, in the future. Um, I'm not exactly sure if we would have to uh, look at options of uh, detouring traffic around the box culvert during the project, or if it's possible to complete the project with a um, sort of where you excavate half the road and replace the culvert and then have the traffic split over each side. Um, but those would, I, I believe those would essentially be the two options with respect to that project. Thank okay. you. Anything okay. further? Yes. Uh, can I just remind director, um, I'm not sure the timeline, but um, uh, obviously next year, I believe it's July 1st, uh, maybe Mr. Thompson can correct me if I'm wrong, that the homecoming uh, will be happening in Durham and it'd be unfortunate if we're in the middle of uh, Main Street 
reconstruction at that time, but it could it could happen, I guess. Um, but that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, Thank through, you yep. through your worship, uh, absolutely, uh, we'll be mindful of that um, and uh, make every effort to uh, to work around homecoming. Very Hi. good. Thank you. Councillor Townsend. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'll start with the homecoming and mention that it's also the 150th anniversary of Durham next year. So hopefully it'll be bigger and better uh, celebration, which if we do as well as we have in the past for attendance, might create a bit of a problem depending on when the work gets done. So uh, I'll just raise that uh, to begin with. Uh, the second thing I'd like to do is um, do a shout out to the provincial government and uh, Mr. Walker, our MPP in, in uh, specific, uh, because of his support and helping us uh, attain these types of things. And I think it's important that we do say thank you to make sure that uh, they do understand we appreciate it and don't just take it for granted. But obviously we're happy for what we get and we're more than willing to take more. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for saying that in, in this meeting. And certainly I have conveyed that on behalf of uh, this West Gray Council as well for the, uh, the funding that we have received to date. So thank you, Councillor Townsend. I'm not seeing anything further on this item. Um, and you'll note that at the end, there is a recommendation um, a correspondence, I, correspondence items not otherwise dealt with to be received. So I'm not specifically looking for a received motion on 10.2.1. On Moving on to 10.2.2, MPP Bill Walker re-announcement of $329,378 in connecting links funding for West Gray. So members of council wish to do anything further? We've had the discussion in the item above. Thank you. A 10.2.3, Town of Am Amherstburg, re-support for amendments to the Agricultural Tile Drainage Installation Act. Is there anything members of council wish to do with this other than receive? Seeing none. 10.2.4, Town of Blind River, re West Gray support for municipal insurance rates resolution. Anything members of council? It's good to have this information on our agenda. 10.2.5, Jim Harrison, Mayor, City of Quinty West River, re West Gray support for municipal insurance rates resolution. Anything members of council? Thank you, seeing none. 10.2.6, County of Lennox and Addington re West Gray support for municipal insurance race res rates resolution. I'm not seeing any members of council with their hand up. So then moving on to 10.2.7, Municipal Property Assessment Corporation, MPAC in brackets, re March 2021 in touch newsletter. Anything on this one, members of council? Seeing none, Clerk Sharbeck, could you please read the recommendation at hand. Through you, Your Worship, the recommendation is that all correspondence items not otherwise dealt with are hereby received. Would there be a mover for this motion? C Councillor Hamilton, are you moving the motion? Yes, I'll move. Is there a seconder for this motion? Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, are you seconding this motion? Thank you, Mayor Robinson. This is Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. I will second the motion. All those in favor, indicate with a raised hand. 6 members of council have voted in favor this motion is carried now on to staff reports under item 11 this is 11.1 .1, director of infrastructure and public works 11.1.1 2021 household hazardous waste day agreement clerk Sharbeck to the recommendation for you Roshef, the recommendation is the council receives the household hazardous waste day agreement report for consideration for participating in the 2021 Household Hazardous Waste Days um, held in Owen Sound, and further that council considers adopting the agreement in the bylaw portion of the agenda. Is there a mover for this motion? Councillor Hamilton, are you moving this motion? Yes, I'll move. Councillor Hutchinson, are you seconding this motion? Yes, I'll second a motion and I have a question too. Well, I wonder if we could first go to um, Director Schwinski and see if there's any presentation with regard to his report and then go right to questions. You're the first one. Director Schwinski. Okay. Certainly, uh, through your worship, um, essentially, uh, this uh, agreement is similar to the one uh, last year. 
Um, uh, we, uh, the municipality of West Gray has participated in the Household Hazardous Waste Days held in Owen Sound. Um, the event is held eight times per year from April to October. And um, essentially uh, that allows uh, um, the residents from uh, West Gray to participate in uh, the Household Hazardous Waste Program. Thank you. Councillor Hutchinson. Yeah, um, I agree. It's something that we've done in the past. Um, I have no problem with that. I'm just curious, are we going to host one of our own? We usually have one in the summertime in, uh, in West Gray. Are we still going to do that? Director? Uh, through your worship, uh, um, we are not going to be having one of those um, uh, this year. Um, and uh, that's uh, so right at this current point in time, this is uh, the only option that we have right now for household hazardous waste. Okay, that's fine. Just so that people know because uh, we have done that in the past. Uh, the other thing, just a comment about the um, this agreement was supposed to be uh, signed and um, sealed, I guess, by Friday, March 19th, 2021. So we're a little bit late, but uh, I guess that's okay. Uh, through your worship, uh, certainly I've been staying in close contact with, um, with Owen Sound with respect to this and, um, um, and upon council's approval, they are waiting for uh, the signed document. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anything further members of council? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please indicate with a raised hand. Six members of council have voted in favor of this motion. The motion is carried. Under 11.2 Recreation Supervisor, 11.2.1 Community Services Agreement, Re-Elephant Thoughts Summer Camp Program. Clerk Sharbeck to the recommendation. To your worship, the recommendation is that council receives the report Recreation Community Services Agreement, RE Elephant Thought Summer Camp Program for information, and the council considered the approval of the bylaw containing the Community Services Agreement during the bylaw portion of the meeting. Is there a mover for this motion? Councillor Shea, are you moving this motion? Yes, I'll move that motion. Is there a seconder for this motion? Councillor Townsend, are you seconding this motion? Councilor Townsend, I'll second the motion. Thank you. And to you, a Supervisor Hewlett, for a presentation. Thank you. Through you, Your Worship. Uh, not much of a presentation in terms of this report, uh, just for, um, to be, sorry, to be received for information uh, by Council. And then uh, there is the Community Service Agreement in the bylaw portion of the agenda. Um, in all honesty, just a really great opportunity to combine resources um, with an organization and offer day camp at a a uh, very reduced rate and be able to offer the opportunity to uh, many families within West Green. Thank you very much. Councillor Hutchinson. Yeah, I think, um, I think we're fortunate to have a, a group of this caliber in our community and it's, um, I'm glad that we're reaching out to, to be involved with them. I just had a couple of questions on the program itself. Um, it sounds like it's going to be subsidized by West Gray uh, is that correct? And there's going to be a subsidy or we're sharing some of the costs and Elephant Thoughts is sharing some of the costs. Is, is that correct, uh, Director? Supervisor? Or recreation Supervisor? Uh, yes, through you. Um, not so much subsidized. However, it's uh, combining resources just to be able to offer the program um, at a reduced rate. Elephant Thoughts has a um, very keen grant writing team. Um, so in combining their um, the grants that they've received as well as the other organizations they work with and our resources and our ability to outreach to the community, um, we're able to offer it at that rate. Yeah, so that brings me to my next question. Is there going to be any preferential treatment for residents of West Gray? How do we guarantee that we have uh, first first opportunity? Um, through you, uh, Mayor Robinson. Um, similar to other municipalities in the area, we don't offer uh, preferential treatment for individuals of West Gray. However, um, individuals with located within our municipal boundaries, um, they often receive our correspondence first, so. Yeah, so first come, first serve basis. Yes, exactly. Okay, and then the other question I had was, um, being that it sounds like the um, program would run out of the elephant thoughts on session two, uh, what about transportation? I'm thinking of some of the people that look for daycare in the summertime and their kids can walk to 
the arena or whatever, now they're going to have to have transportation. Are we looking after that or how is that working? Uh, through you, Mayor Robinson, we're not providing any transportation. Um, with that being said, I did take a look through um, all of our documents from past years, and we don't have any individuals who tend to walk to our program anymore. Uh, they all usually come by vehicle. Hmm. Okay. Okay, I just wondered if that was going to be an issue, but maybe not. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Members of Council, anything further? Councillor Townsend. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, yes, the the first question on my head was related to whether or not uh, the program would qualify if in fact we are still under lockdown. Is there um, like what are the numbers of the attendees in each session and is there a way that uh, that could show an exemption that we uh, considered that yet? Um, so the, through you, Mayor Robinson, the, the program running is still pending COVID restrictions. With that being said, I've been in close contact with public health um, consistently throughout the whole pandemic and public health as well as the province is very, they're leaning to the fact that we'll be able to operate. Um, currently the province is working through guidelines for um, your typical stay over camps. Um, and with that being said, there's much lower risk of transmission within a municipal day camp. So we should be able to operate this summer. Um, all of our camp program is pending. The restrictions we're awaiting. However, um, we've been told that we should have the green light to go ahead. Super, thank you very much for that response. Um, my second question has to do with the, uh, the cost and I'm assuming that it is funded through the budget that we're proposing um, and we'll be providing um, notice of intent uh, later on in this, uh, this uh, agenda. Is that true? Through you, Mayor Robinson, yes, that's correct. Thank you very much. That's all my questions, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Shea. Uh, thank you. I'll just mention that uh, we did have a presentation from this group, Eleven Thoughts, at uh, our accessibility uh, committee meeting uh, one meeting ago, so about three weeks ago. And we're very impressed with their efforts to make all of their uh, facilities and programs uh, as accessible as possible. They've already uh, received some funding for uh, making their um, the, the grass walking areas uh, more wheelchair accessible, and I believe they, they may be seeking some municipal support to uh, take that even further. So I just wanted to sort of uh, let you know that the Accessibility Committee was uh, very impressed um, with their, uh, uh, their, their, their ambitions in this area. Uh, so that's just a comment. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hamilton. Thanks, Mayor Robinson. Just a quick uh, comment to say thank you so much um, to our supervisor for all the work you've done to make this happen. And it's really exciting to see the partnerships and collaboration come together because you have a, such a rich program that you're going to be delivering. It sounds so interesting. And just the way you're able to play off each other's strengths to find more funding and um, just deliver such a great program at a reduced rate for our families. So it's, it's really appreciated. I'm excited to, um, to hear more about it throughout the summer. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. To the, um, to the motion, all those in favor indicate with a raised hand. Six members of council have voted in favor of it. This motion's carried. This is very good news and it is an exciting opportunity. Thank you very much, Supervisor Hewlett. Item number 12 questions. Um, so questions from members of council. Is there anything at this point? Item 13 by, oh, just before that, Councilor Townsend. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just had trouble getting my hand up fast enough. Fair enough. Um, I actually have two areas of, uh, of question. Uh, the first one has to do with addendums. I've noticed that we're doing uh, more addendums than I, I think I've ever seen in the, uh, the first part of our our term and, and it kind of worries me a bit in the sense that um, we receive them, we get notice of them, but anyone that's going to the website, depending when they go, may or may not see that there's been an addendum there. So my question is, is could, um, could staff actually uh, work on a process that would allow the public to also be advised if there's an addendum and that uh, also we look at whether or not we should be limiting them based on the urgency of getting them on for that particular uh, agenda. Um, so I'd like to turn that over to say Madam CIO and see if we can get a response on that, please. 
Uh, first, I'd like to go to uh, Madam Clerk and then uh, Madam CAO. So, uh, Clerk Sharbeck. Sure, uh, through you, Worship. Thank you for that question, Councillor Townsend. It is really important that um, we keep addendums to a minimum and they are only when absolutely necessary. Um, trust me, I'm not a fan of addendums either. I think as we're adjusting to our new schedule, um, everybody's adjusting to getting things in two weeks prior to the meeting. Uh, sometimes there is um, on oh, this addendum for this meeting, for example, is a transfer payment agreement, which we need to get back signed and back to the province by the end of the month. But their turnaround, when we get it and have to get it back to them, it, it just fits so in a council meeting. So we only had time to get it into this agenda package as an addendum, or we, our next meeting is May 4th and we need it back. And it's really important that uh, we say, yes, we want the funds. So I do save it for urgent matters. And I think as we adjust and everybody contributing things to the agenda adjusts to backing up the timeline a little bit so we can get all that information out sooner. Um, it will lessen the number or the frequency of addendums. Unfortunately, the province will just go on their timelines and get it in when we can and say, thank you for the funds. Uh, but I, my understanding and um, I'll, I'll check with staff who know a lot more about IT than I do, but my understanding is when the agendas are posted or addendums are posted on the website, that anybody subscribing to that page is notified of that. And uh, if it turns out that that's not happening or not the case, we will certainly make sure that we do what we can to make sure that notice goes out to anybody subscribing to the page. So, so thanks for raising that, we'll give that a double check and look at uh, um, just keeping those addendums to a minimum um, for the sake of uh, transparency and everybody understanding what, what's going to be discussed at the council meeting. Thank you. Madam CAO. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor, and uh, for the question. I echo the clerk's uh, explanation and comments. Uh, we, we do have that link between our subscribers and any changes to the website. And another thing that, that uh, we can commit to is, you know, using our social media a little bit more, sharing that there's been something new posted, because I know that uh, everyone that is active on social media is very helpful in sharing that message. But um, as the clerks mentioned, we are committed to keeping addendums to a minimum and for emergency matters, timing matters only. So, um, but I appreciate the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Townsend, back to you. You had mentioned you had two comments or questions. Just a comment on the first one. And, and sure. um, the, the comment and the question was not meant to be uh, critical or derogatory on the services being provided today. Sure. Uh, it really is, as um, Claire Charbeck uh, mentioned, we're going through a lot of change and sometimes we may not realize some of the impact that we get. And you know, I raised an issue with the CEO today where uh, a change that we've made and how people get access to the agendas and how they disappear quickly. And, you know, we want them to last there a little longer. So uh, that's gonna be worked on too. It's just some of the things that just happen, you know, as, as things happen. Uh, my second question actually is again, looking at uh, improvement and, and doing things in a timely fashion. And I sort of raised it today at the, um, the public meeting regarding uh, when we have something from the um, Committee of Adjustment or something from planning that doesn't require approval uh, from another body or another step. Um, I, I wonder if um, staff could look at, is it possible to actually have it on, not just the subsequent agenda, but even if it happens to be that one day or one day later, and I'll give you an idea of what I'm thinking. If we know that something is coming up and has a chance of approval, would something like saying, we prepare the bylaw, we prepare everything, we include it in the subsequent agenda, which is the next day or same day, but it's qualified that um, should it actually be passed, that's when it would get addressed. And so if it isn't passed at the COA, like the recommendation doesn't, the Committee of Adjustment, sorry, I shouldn't use acronyms. If it's uh, recommended for council to approve with the Committee of Adjustment or they've 
approve it themselves, but there's a follow-up or something from the public meeting that can be done that we're actually ready to do that that quickly. And I say that only for expediency from the resident. And yet a byproduct of that is we get to deal with it in a timely fashion, which means that we don't have to wait a long time to refresh ourselves as well, which means we'll take less time actually reviewing it. So it's a win-win situation for everybody. So I wasn't looking for an answer tonight. I was just throwing that out as a potential uh, opportunity, perhaps enhancement and, and timing for the people that are applying for service from us. Thank you for bringing that forward. Then if you're not looking for a comment back, that is just fine. But it certainly um, enhances customer service. So thank you for raising that. Would that conclude um, your comments here or your questions? Yes, it Counselor. does. Thank you. thank you as well. Over to Councillor Hutchinson. Yeah, I just have one question. Uh, maybe it's directed to the CAO um, oh. regarding the closure of uh, parks and trails and oh. playgrounds. Um, there, there has been some confusion on that, and I just wanted to see where we're at with that. Uh, sounds like everything was closed, and then they, they reneged and <laughs> opened up some playgrounds, but I'm not sure. I haven't heard whether parks or trails or any of those areas open again, or are they still all closed? Well, uh, thank you for bringing this forward. I was going to address it under announcements, but because you've uh, uh, brought it forward under questions, it's most appropriate as well. Um, I'll first go to Madam CAO. Uh, you, could, uh, you could respond rather than myself, Madam CAO. We're a tag team, I guess. That's a, one way to describe <laughs> it. Please go ahead, Madam CAO. <laughs> Yes, th thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor, for the opportunity to pr provide some clarity. I will also defer to the Recreation Supervisor, who was busy on the weekend monitoring and messaging uh, the staff that uh, helped out with that. It was a confusing weekend. Uh, we did, under the provincial order, we were required to close uh, those kinds of spaces. And then I believe it was on Saturday. Weekend is a blur, but anyway, I think it was on Saturday that there was a, a directive to reopen. Uh, Madam Mayor, if I could go to Mr. Hewlett, he could he yes. could probably walk through the timeline, uh, which would be fabulous. Absolutely, great suggestion. Supervisor <laughs> Hewlett, please. Uh, yes, if I may, um, Madam CAO summed it up pretty succinctly. Um, we received direction on, I believe it was Friday that we had to close um, playgrounds, green spaces, um, everything of that matter. And then late, late, late uh, Saturday evening, um, early Sunday morning, uh, we received direction, official direction uh, beyond that of a tweet that we could reopen our uh, playgrounds and green spaces. However, it does get a little bit confusing. Um, so playgrounds and green spaces can be open. However, um, areas for organized sports such as uh, ball diamonds, soccer pitches, that sort of thing, uh, still remain closed. Um, so there is a little bit of confusion there. However, um, Claire Sharbeck, um, as well as uh, Laura, or CAO and myself, have tried our best to update our social media and share that message as much as possible. Um, so we're getting there and we're trying. Um, it was definitely the most um, exciting weekend since um, this pandemic started. It kept us quite busy. Um, but yes, our playgrounds and green spaces have been reopened. Um, with the exception of the Newstead Lions playground, uh, that playground still remains closed for maintenance. And okay. I wonder if you could also identify um, your connection with SVCA through the through Friday up until today. Yes, um, thank you, Mayor Robinson. So moving forward, um, the SVCA properties, they have made the decision to still keep their um, properties closed. We're still awaiting official media, media release from them, uh, but it should be coming shortly and then we'll share it through all of our channels as appropriate. Thank okay. you. Thank you. And Sorry. I just wondered, um, I just wondered also, Madam CAO, do you want to take the opportunity just to advise about the office is not open, but the hours, et cetera? Uh, it, I just feel it's a, it's a good juncture to do that here. Uh, yes, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, much like um, a previous stay at home order, uh, we have uh, our business continuity program is in place. So we have a number of staff that are working remotely and a core team of uh, employees that are in the office to answer phones and handle emails and make sure mail and administrative functions carry on seamlessly. Um, everyone's working safely, keeping their distance. We did have the two day um, suspension, uh, which was a provincial order. That was last week, Thursday and Friday where staff were, were sent home. Um, and, but I, I'm happy to report that 
all operations are back to our regular model as best uh, as much as we can under a pandemic. But um, so there are people in the building. There's opportunity for, um, you know, the drop box is available for anyone that needs to leave anything, but there's ways that we can communicate. And um, I'd like to thank the community for being so adaptable because it has been, um, you know, their cooperation has been very much appreciated as well. Well, thank you, Madam CAO. And certainly I, I have um, always kept uh, members of council updated and that was through always a phone call and it's followed up with, uh, with an email, but it was just a good opportunity because we're in a council meeting, very public to uh, continue to extend and have that communication even uh, broader out there. So that's most important. Okay, with that, Councillor Hutchinson, you still have the mic. No, I think that answers all my questions. Thank you very much. Well, you're quite welcome. Any other member of council on this item, which is item 12? Okay, now we'll go over to item 13 then, which is bylaws. And the first one is 13.1 bylaw number 26-2021 shared service summer day camp. Quick Trebek to the motion, uh, recommendation. To your worship, the recommendation is that the council of the municipality of West Gray gives first, second, and third and final reading to bylaw number 26, 2021, being a bylaw to authorize the shared services agreement between the municipality of West Gray and Elephant Thoughts for the provision of a summer camp program. Is there a mover for this motion? And I'm looking to Councillor Hutchinson because your electronic hand is up. Um, to your microphone, please. I can move that motion. My hand was left over, that's all, but that's fine. Oh, okay. And you're okay to move the motion. Thank you. Is there a seconder then for this motion? Councillor Hamilton, are you seconding this motion? Yes, thank you. Are there any questions with regard to the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, indicate with a raised hand. Six members of council have voted in favor of this motion. The motion is carried. Item 13.2, bylaw number 27 2021, which is the 2021 Household Hazardous Waste Day Agreement. Clerk, throw back to the recommendation. To your worship, the recommendation is that the Council of the Municipality of West Gray gives first, second, and third and final reading to bylaw number 27 2021, being a bylaw to authorize a 2021 Household Hazardous Waste Program municipal participation agreement between the municipality of West Gray and the city of Owen Sound. Thank you. Is there a mover for this motion? Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, are you moving this motion? Thank you, Mayor Robinson. This is Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. I will move that motion. Councillor Townsend, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Townsend, yes, I'll second the motion. Questions? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate with a raised hand. Six members of council have voted in favor of the motion. The motion is carried. Item 13.3, bylaw number 28-2021, employee remuneration. Quick share back to the recommendation. To you, worship. The recommendation is that the council of the municipality of West Gray gives first, second, and third and final reading to bylaw number 28-2021, being a bylaw to adopt the employee salary grid. Is there a mover for this motion? Councillor Townsend, are you moving the motion? Councillor Townsend, yes, I'll move that motion. Is there a seconder for this motion? Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, are you seconding this motion? Yes, this is Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. I will second the motion. Questions? Councillor Hutchinson. Uh, yeah, um, maybe the, the CAA could ex uh, explain the uh, difference in steps. Um, I don't believe those steps one, step two, so on, are based on a yearly thing. They're based on a period of time, qualifications. How, do, how does the step differentiate work? Madam CAO. Thank you for the question, Councillor Hutchinson, and, and through you, Madam Mayor. It's, it's a bit of a combination. For new employees that start with the corporation, you're, you're right. Um, they're placed on the grid based on experience, qualifications, um, and typically what they're bringing to the position. For uh, you know, folks that are that are coming to us with uh, minimal experience, they they would start at step one. 
progression on the grid is based on a merit um, performance review system. So, you know, if they've had a satisfactory performance review, then, then they have an upward movement on the grid. Um, I don't know if the treasurer has anything further to add, but that's, that's the basics of how our five steps per pay band are, are working. Certainly. Um, Director Mighton. Uh, yes, I concur with the, the CAO. Um, the uh, progression along the grid um, is based on the, the merit uh, performance reviews on an annual basis. Okay. And to further that, so the uh, performance review is not necessarily done yearly? Madam CAO? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor. Yes, uh, Councillor, we do performance reviews on an annual basis for all staff, uh, whether they've reached job rate or not. Um, and, and I, from my experience, staff appreciate the feedback and the opportunity to um, do that recap. So it's a good exercise. Okay, good for clarification. Thank you. Thank you as well. <laughs> Anything further, members of council? To the, um, to the motion at hand, all those in favor, indicate with a raised hand. Six members of council have voted in favor of the motion. The motion is carried. 13.4, bylaw number 29-2021, confirm proceedings of council. Clerk Sherbeck to the recommendation. Through you, Your Worship, the recommendation is that the Council of the Municipality of Westway gives first, second, and third and final rating to bylaw number 29-2021, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council of the Corporation of the Municipality of Westway. Is there a mover for this motion? Councillor Hamilton, are you moving this motion? Yes, I move. Councillor Shea, are you seconding? I'll second the motion. Questions, members of council? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate with a raised hand. Six members of council have voted in favor of the motion. The motion is carried. Now we do have the addendum bylaw, which is item 13.5, bylaw number 30-2021. Ontario Transfer Payment Agreement, Court Security and Prisoner Transport. Clerk Sherbeck to the recommendation. Through you, Worship. Um, I'll, I'll read the recommendation, but I would like an opportunity to go back and give notice of our budget bylaw following this one, if you're okay with that. So, well, hang on a moment, just so I'm clear. You would rather uh, deal with the um, notice of motion first, or you want to deal with this bylaw? Uh, no, just uh, I would like to read aloud the notice that um, we can do that first. There's no motion, there's no vote, just to give notice as per our procedural bylaw. It is printed on our agenda. Um, okay, okay, so that's fine. I was dealing with the addendum oh, as 13.5, okay. dealing with this bylaw, then going back to 13.6 for the notice. But okay. You're the procedural expert. Am I okay to proceed as sure. suggested? Okay, thank you. So, so 13.5 then to the recommendation. Through you, Your Worship, the recommendation is that the Council of the Municipality of West Gray gives first, second, and third and final reading to bylaw number 30, 2021, being a bylaw to authorize an Ontario transfer payment agreement between Her Majesty the Queen in Right of Ontario as represented by the Solicitor General for Court Security and Prisoner Transport Program. Is there a mover for this motion? Councillor Townsend, are you moving this motion? Councillor Townsend, yes, I'll move the motion. Is there a seconder for this motion? Councillor Shea, are you seconding this motion? I'll second that motion. Questions? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate with a raised hand. Six members of council have voted in favor of this motion. This motion is carried. And now to 13.6 notice. Clerk Sherbeck, could you please provide notice? Through you, your worship. Um, West Gray Council hereby gives notice of its intention to pass a bylaw to adopt the 2021 budget at the regular council meeting to be held on May 4th, 2021 at 9 a.m. Anything further you require from this council at this point? 
Thank you. No, you're sure. We are now moving on to item 14, which is new business. 14.1, notice a motion. Thank you, Gray Bruce Health Unit staff. Commitment to community health. Um, Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, this is your notice of motion. Would you care to read it? I would uh, be uh, more than happy to read it, Mayor Robinson. Okay, I can go ahead. Okay, where is the, thank you, Mayor Robinson. Whereas the COVID-19 pandemic has been a crisis globally and locally, and whereas local public health authorities have been leaders in public information and professional guidance and whereas the Gray Bruce Health Unit under Dr. Ian Ayer's leadership has tirelessly provided support, information and direction and whereas the Gray Bruce Health Unit continues, <coughs> excuse me, serving and protecting our communities and whereas the Gray Bruce Health Unit recently set a national uh, vaccine record. Therefore, be it resolved, the council directs staff to send a letter from West Gray Council to congratulate and thank Dr. Ayer and his staff for their dedicated services and commitment to community health. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I see that you are moving your notice of motion. Is, this, is there a seconder for this um, motion? Councillor Hutchinson, are you seconding this motion? Yes, I'll second that motion. All those in favor, indicate with a raised hand. Six, Six members of council have voted in favor of this motion. The motion is carried. Under item 15, announcements, members of council, are there any announcements? Councillor Hutchinson. Uh, I'd just like to make one announcement that uh, I'd encourage all people to uh, get out and get your vaccine shot. Uh, I will receive mine tomorrow. And um, hopefully uh, that we can get ahead of this, uh, this uh, pandemic and, and uh, all become somewhat back to normal in uh, the near future. So go get it. Thank you. Thank you. Members of Council, anything further under this section? I have been asked by um, the, the president of the Durham Agricultural Society, which is uh, Debbie Tucker, to just read this um, letter. So it is um, to the municipality of West Gray. To say that 2020 will go down in history as the strangest year ever isn't far from the mark. What we are hearing around us is we don't know the third wave, the after effects, the schedule for vaccine, the next lockdown. It's too many we don't knows. So we as the Durham Agricultural Society have made the decision to cancel the 2021 fall fair this Labor Day weekend. We feel it to be the safest, smartest thing for us to do with so much uncertainty. We care about our community and our volunteers too much to put anyone in jeopardy. However, we also do know that we collectively are going a bit stir crazy. So instead of the Labor Day weekend, we will be having what we are going to call the fall, uh, the fair weekend celebration. To that end, we are in the process of planning for events that we still can do. Please watch for our bike draw for children and adults, sponsored in part by Farlow's Home Hardware, the coloring contest for children and adults sponsored by Stoltz Farm Equipment and the 50-50 draw, which will be drawn on July 1st, 2022. The drive through parade, store decoration competition, front yard, front gate decoration competition and our evening out drive through takeaway meal. All of these things are in the works. Watch for details as they unfold to tell you where to pick up the draw entries, color pages, or tickets. Until then, please please stay smart and stay safe. Most sincerely, Deb Tucker, President, Durham Agricultural Society. I will ensure that this is um, circulated to members of council and uh, through correspondence on an agenda, but I just followed through on the request from the um, president of the Durham Ag. Um, 
I also please. I just wanted to recognize National Volunteer Week, which is um, April 18th to the 24th. Thank you to all the volunteers who selflessly give their time to our community. Thank you for that. Councillor Townsend. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I just wanted to uh, state that I uh, heard just this past week that the um, Durham Healthcare Foundation uh, is actually going to hold their gala um, this fall. I don't have a date yet, okay. um, but it will be back to online. It will not be in person. Um, they had a great uh, response last year. I think it was a, a record uh, fundraising time. And obviously given the strain and that on hospitals and equipment and et cetera, uh, I'm sure they'll be looking for the same level or even better support uh, this fall. So just a heads up, keep your eyes open. I'm sure you'll see an announcement soon. Thank you. Thank you. Any other member of council wishes to uh, make announcements under item 15? Okay. Um, item 16, closed session. That's an NA for this agenda. Item 17, report from closed session, NA. And item 18, adjournment. Clerk Sharbeck to the recommendation. Through you, Your Worship, the recommendation is that we do now adjourn at 7.50 p.m. to meet again on May 4th, 2021 at 9 a.m. or at the call of the chair. Is there a mover for this motion? Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, are you moving this motion? Thank you, Mayor Robinson. This is Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. I will move the motion. Is there a seconder for this motion? Um, Councillor Townsend, are you seconding this motion? Yes, Councillor Townsend, I'm seconding that motion. All those in favor indicate with a raised hand. Six members of council have voted in favor of this motion. The motion is carried. Have a wonderful evening, members of council and citizens and staff. Thank you.